This is Mr. Leach. Today we are going to be doing a sampling distribution review. I will get out a few pieces of paper so you can do some work and write some things down. This is a review, so the way I'm going to approach this video is with the assumption that you already have some previous knowledge. The first thing that we are going to do is I'm going to show you the three questions we're going to be talking about today. I need you to identify the type of variable, whether it's categorical or quantitative, and then identify the parameter. Tell me whether this should be a proportion or a mean or something like that. If it's a proportion, what symbol is that? If it's a mean, what symbol is that? I am going to go through the three questions and then I will go over the type of variable and the parameter. Here's the first question. The superintendent of a large school district wants to know what proportion of middle school students in her district are planning to attend a four-year college or university. Suppose that 80% of all middle school students in her district are planning to attend a four-year college or university. What is the probability that an SRS of size 125 will give a result within 7 percentage points of the true value? So now write down what type of variable you think this is, whether it is categorical or quantitative, and then what's the symbol for the parameter? Our next question is about peanut butter. At the Peanutty Peanut Butter Company, dry roasted shelled peanuts are placed in jars by a machine. The distribution of weights in the jars is approximately normal with a mean of 16.1 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.15 ounces. Find the probability of randomly selecting 10 jars and finding that the average contents weigh less than 16 ounces. Again, what type of variable is this? Is this categorical or quantitative? And what's the parameter? make sure to include its symbol. And lastly, let's talk about texting students. Suppose that the number of texts sent during a typical day by a randomly selected high school student follows a right skewed distribution with a mean of 15 and a standard deviation of 35 texts. Assuming that students at your school are typical texters, how likely is it that a random sample of 50 students will have sent more than a total of 1,000 texts in the last 24 hours? Again, what type of variable is this? And identify our parameter of interest. Let's talk about the attending college problem. The type of variable is definitely categorical. And that's because they're either going to attend the four-year college or university or not. It's a definite yes or no situation. So then, especially since it's a yes or no type of categorical variable, we are going to be dealing with a proportion. That symbol, of course, is going to be a P. Okay, the peanut butter example, this is going to definitely be quantitative. This is quantitative because each jar is going to have a weight and it makes sense to take the average. It's not a yes or no, you're not fitting them into a category or not. You're actually going to have a number, this number has a unit, and so it's going to make sense to find the mean of that. Speaking of the mean, its parameter is the mu. And lastly, texting students, this is also going to be quantitative. The unit is number of texts. The question asked about a sum, a total number of texts, and we can turn that total number of texts into a mean. We just have to divide it by how many elements we have. So this too will be a mean. Okay, so we're going to answer the first question about attending college. I'm going to give you an opportunity to try it on your own. Whenever you see this symbol, pause and try. Make sure to pause the video and try it on your own. The video will play for about five seconds, after which I will then continue on and explain the answer. So go ahead, pause the video, try it on your own, and I'll see you back here in a minute. So now let's check our work. One note about the work. I teach an AP statistics course, so the work I have presented is what I expect of my students. My work might be slightly different than the way your instructor prefers it, so make sure to check with them if you have any questions about how I might do things differently. I break up these questions in four parts. We have state, 
plan, do, and conclude. In state, we just state what we know and what we want to know. Plan is where we write down all of our conditions. Do is where we do the math. And conclude is where we make our conclusions. You don't have to follow these four steps. You don't have to write those down. But it's just helpful to have structure and consistency from one problem to the other. So let's take a look at this question. P is the proportion of students who plan to be attending college. Q would be the proportion of those who aren't. Just do 1 minus P to get to Q. And N is 125. And I want to know this probability here. The probability that P hat, which is the sample proportion, is between 0.73 and 0.87. It says within 7 percentage points, so that's between 0.73 and 0.87. We have our three conditions here. We're told this is a random sample, and our 10% condition, since this is a large school district, 125 is surely less than 10% of all middle school students. And then we have our large counts. NP and NQ are both greater than or equal to 10. Make sure to give me some sort of numbers here. I don't just want to see NP is greater than or equal to 10. I need to see one of these two numbers here. The math would be probably the best if you were to just write one of them. With these three things being true, we know that our sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal. Let's do the do. Our normal model is going to be centered at P with a standard deviation of this 0 0.035777. I'm lazy and I don't necessarily want to round, so just write down whatever the calculator tells me. And my calculator by default gives me six digits after the decimal. I get the standard deviation from square root of PQ divided by N. So that's my new distribution. Like I said, this is going to be normal, so we can just use our normal math. So for my picture, I want to see between 0.73 and 0.87. So you can use the z-scores if you want to, or you can just go directly to the calculator with the actual context values. One note about this work down here. Me personally, I don't want my students to write down calculator jargon. If you do, however, write down calculator jargon, you must identify the parameters you put in. In this case, I'm using the TI Inspire. It's very similar to the commands of the TI-84. With one exception, the TI Inspire does have an infinity button, so you will be seeing me use the infinity button a little bit later. So if you do write down calculator jargon, you have to tell me this is the lower bound, the upper bound, mu, and sigma. So that's what I've done here. You don't really have to write both. I wrote them both for note purposes, but you do have to identify them. And an easy way to do that is just to write down like, like this lower, draw an arrow, upper, draw an arrow, mu, draw an arrow, and sigma, draw an arrow. That has to be labeled. So then our final answer, make sure to put it in context. Really, we're just regurgitating the question of interest with our answer in it. So for my conclusion, I have according to the normal model, there is a 0.9496 probability that an SRS of size 125 will give a result within seven percentage points of the true percentage of middle school students planning to attend college. Here's our peanut question again. Before we actually answer the question, I just have something that we need to think about. If you look right here where it says, without doing any calculations, explain which outcome is more likely. And we have two options. Option A, randomly selecting a single jar and finding that the contents weigh less than 16 ounces. Or B, randomly selecting 10 jars and finding that the average contents weigh less than 16 ounces. So take a second, don't do any calculations, and think about this. So which one is going to be more likely? Definitely A. This is actually going to be more likely. We're going to see the math in just a second, but just think about this. In order for the average content to be less than 16 ounces, I would have to consistently get these 10 jars that are lower than average and significantly lower than average that they would have an average less than 16. Whereas with this one, I just have to find a jar that is less than 16. Here I have to find multiple jars less than 16. And we also know that as our sample size increases, the variability of the sampling distribution is also going to decrease. So that's another explanation as to what's at play here. 
So I just need you to do part A here. Find the probability of randomly selecting a single jar and finding that the contents weigh less than 16 ounces. Try this on your own. First of all, it's important that we note that this is not a sampling distribution question at all. This is not a sampling distribution question. This is just a basic normal model question that you likely saw at the beginning of your stats course. Just a normal model question. So we have our picture here. I like to start my normal model questions with the picture, which helps explain to the reader and also helps you as well understand what's going on. So I have a mean of 16, standard deviation 0.15, and my area less than 16 here. I can calculate a z-score, or I can also just use the calculator. If you use a z-score, you can opt to use the table, or you can use the calculator. So I have the normal CDF from negative infinity to 16, with a mean of 16.1 and a standard deviation of 0.15. Again, if you use a calculator, make sure to note what parameters you're using. If you, if you are using the table, you would look up a negative 0.67 in the table. If you are using the table, this only rounds to four decimal places and is likely pretty close to this number. Not exact, because I'm using a more exact value, but it should be pretty close. But I get 252492. So according to the normal model, the probability of random selecting a jar that weighs less than 16 ounces is about 25%. Now let's do the sampling distributions question. Find the probability of randomly selecting 10 jars and finding that the average contents weigh less than 16 ounces. Pause and try this on your own. Okay, so this is a sampling distributions question, so let's make sure to go through the four steps. So let's state what we know. The distribution of the weight of peanuts is normally distributed with a mean of 16.1 ounce and 0.15 ounces for the standard deviation and our sample size is 10. When you read these questions you should immediately be thinking about what's my shape and what's my sample size because that's going to drive how we do this. Since my shape is normal that means for my normal large sample condition we don't have to worry about the sample size because the distribution of the population is already normal. So we are told the distribution of weights is approximately normal, which means that the sampling distribution is also going to be approximately normal. Lastly, with state, we are wanting to find that the probability that x bar is less than 16 ounces. Two more conditions to talk about. We are told this is a random sample of 10 jars, and 10 jars is surely less than 10% of all the jars produced. If you're told the total number of jars produced, you could check that, but Clearly, they make more than 100 jars at a peanut factory. Let's do our do step. So our, we have a normal model that is centered at 16.1 with a standard deviation of 0.047434. We got that from our standard deviation formula. This time, it's sigma divided by the square root of n. So here's a picture of this distribution. Notice how much further 16 is away this time. It is over two standard deviations below the mean. So do your calculations, either, either using the z-score and the table or the calculator, and you should get 0 0.017507. So according to the normal model, there is a 0 0.017507 chance of randomly selecting 10 jars and finding that the average contents weigh less than 16 ounces. So there's a pretty big difference in getting 25% and about 1%. And this difference is because we did a sampling distribution of size 10 instead of just selecting 1. Again, evidence that when we increase the sample size, that standard deviation is going to decrease. Lastly, let's take a look at our texting students question. The tricky part about this is that they gave us a total of a thousand texts to look for and not a mean. So take just a second and turn this information into a mean. So this 1,000 texts is a sum, and this 50 students is my sample size, and the formula for x bar, of course, as we know, is we just add up all of our elements and divide by n, which is the sum of x divided by n, 
So this is 1,000 divided by 50, which ends up being 20 texts. So now that you see that our mean is going to be 20 texts, go ahead and finish the sampling distributions question. Let's check our work. We have a mean of 15 text so with a standard deviation of 35. And they made a point to tell us that this is quite skewed, so your brain should automatically be looking for the sample size and hoping that it's more than 30. And it is. It's 50. So that means that our condition down here works. Our sample is 50, which is bigger than 30. So according to the central limit theorem, that's what the CLT stands for, central limit theorem, the sampling distribution of means is approximately normal. Remember that if for some reason this text seems scary and you're afraid you're going to miswrite it or not write it correctly, in a pinch you could just write n equals 50, which is greater than or equal to 30. But I do like to have the explanation as to why. But if you write something and you write it incorrectly, you would have to be docked for it. So do be careful about that. So here's our calculation we saw in the previous slide on how we can turn a sum into a mean so what we're looking for is the probability that x bar is greater than 20. One note about these continuous distributions, if I said greater than 20 or greater than or equal to 20, that's the same thing in these continuous distributions. So two more conditions to talk about. We are told this is a random sample of 50 students, and that 50 students is less than 10% of students at my school. My school is 2,400 students, so this is less than 50. Because the question was worded, my school, I answered it this way. Normally on a test, they would tell you the total population of the school, or they would say it was a large school or something like that. Remember, there are three ways that you could address the 10% condition issue. You can sort of use the well, duh approach, the surely 50 students is less than 10% of, of all students at the school. You could use the provisional statement. You could say 50 students is less than 10% as long as there are at least 500 students at the school. Thirdly, the question might say there are 2,400 students at the school, which you would then show that 50 is less than 10% of 2,400. Our normal model is centered at 15 with a standard deviation of 4.94975. We got that by taking our standard deviation the sigma and dividing it by square root of n, that actually gets pretty small. If you were to calculate a z-squared, this is just over one standard deviation above the mean. You can either use the table or you can use the calculator. And the most accurate answer I can get using the calculator is 0.156211. So according to the normal model, there's about a 15.6% chance that a random sample of 50 students will have sent more than a total of 1,000 texts or an average of 20 texts in the last 24 hours. I hope this review of sampling distributions helped get you ready for whatever test or AP test you might be needing to take. Good luck!